What is up? This is Alex from Double Move Sports back with another video. Today I am getting into the top five winners from free agency so far. It is still early. I'm recording this on the morning of the 17th, so there have been some big deals that have broken, but still a lot of big name free agents out on the market. I am sure we will see some trades as well, but I just want to break down early in this free agency window which players, which teams, which situations do I think have seen the biggest benefit so far? And I'm just going to jump right into it and start out with number one. It's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They've been able to bring back Shaq Barrett, Levante David, Chris Godwin, and Gronk. As of the time of this recording, there's rumors they're still working on Leonard Fournette, Antonio Brown. Remains to be seen whether or not they'll be able to get that done. But the Bucs are gearing up to run it back for a second straight Super Bowl Tom Brady and company will be back strong in 2021. There were a lot of questions out there as to whether or not they would be able to retain this defense, retain this offense, and it sure looks like they are giving it their best shot to do so. Even if Fournette and AB aren't back, they still have other options. There's been rumors James White could be in Tampa um, and more, but just being able to bring back Barrett, David, Godwin, and Gronk, that is going to be huge for this team. If you're a Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan, you have to be very, very excited they are going to keep the majority of that roster intact heading into next season. But number two, we're going to talk about a player, and it's Cam Newton. Cam Newton, I mean, a month ago, we thought might be done. We thought might be competing for a backup job somewhere in the league. And now he finds himself back with the Patriots with a better offense than he had last season. Say what you want about some of the signings the Patriots have made, but it's better than what they had in 2020. So not only did Cam Newton get another contract, another chance to prove himself in New England on a deal worth up to $13.5 million, but he also got help. He got Johnny Smith on a four-year $50 million deal. Hunter Henry, three-year $37 million deal. These guys fit Newton's skill set. Two really solid tight ends to allow Cam Newton to hit those shorter underneath big body targets. Maybe his deep accuracy has gone a little bit, and that's why these tight ends are so important. But if you're Cam Newton, you got to love it. He was really good with Greg Olson in Carolina. So getting Johnny Smith and Hunter Henry is going to allow is going to allow Cam Newton to do some damage in New England. Sure, they're probably going to run more two tight end sets, but that could also open some things up for Cam Newton on design quarterback runs um, and some scrambles that he has on passing plays as well. They also brought in Nelson Aguilar and Kendrick Bourne. No, these aren't the top flight receivers he probably wanted to see, but it's better than Damier Bird and Nikhil Harry, who they had running around last season. So they'll still have Jacoby Myers as well. Aguilar, I still think, has a little bit of juice, and Bourne has speed. So this pass Pat's offense has definitely improved, whether the money was well spent or not. Cam Newton's back at the least competing for a starting job. So he is a huge winner early in free agency. Moving down to number three, I have Austin Eckler running back for the LA Chargers. And this is all about the help on the offensive line. These moves could be overlooked because in 2020, the Chargers offensive line was ranked dead last in the NFL per pro football focus. They brought in all pro center Corey Lindsley from the Green Bay Packers already. That's going to be an awesome, awesome piece in the middle of their offensive line. And Matt Filer from the Pittsburgh Steelers, who is a very, very solid um, offensive lineman played tackle earlier in his career played guard last season so I expect him to play guard in LA and between Corey Lindsley at center Matt Filer at guard that is two rock solid pieces for the interior of that offensive line that should help protect Justin Herbert but more importantly it should open things up for Austin Eckler on the ground moving on to number four Terry McLaurin and this is all about that upgrade at quarterback to Ryan Fitzpatrick at least, you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick will be in the competition. There are still rumors about drafting a guy. There's Sam Darnold rumors still floating around. But regardless, it's going to be better than what they had last season because of the Fitzpatrick signing. Terry McLaurin in 2020, 87 receptions, 1,118 yards and four touchdowns. And here are how the pass attempts broke down for Washington. You had 252 from Alex Smith, 241 from Dwayne Haskins, 87 from Kyle Allen, and 19 from Taylor Heineke. Not a lot of high-quality pass attempts coming there in Washington. Those guys combined for 6.3 yards per attempt and an 80 passer rating. 
That's terrible. Now, as I said, at the least, he gets Ryan Fitzpatrick. Should be an upgrade at the quarterback spot moving forward. Fitzpatrick at least isn't afraid to sling the ball, and he's still doing it at a decent level as well. In 2020, Fitzpatrick had 7.8 yards per attempt and a 95 passer rating. So this should just be a huge lift to McLaurin's volume and his efficiency in 2021. Last but not least, on this list, I have Trevor Lawrence and the Jacksonville Jaguars as winners from the early free agency period. And no, they didn't really make any splash signings, but the addition of Marvin Jones is probably going to be overlooked. And I think this is a big time signing for not only the Jaguars, but for Trevor Lawrence. First of all, it's a great deal for Jacksonville. Two years, $14.5 million. That's less than Nelson Aguilar got um, in New England. It's, it's less than Kendrick Bourne got on a per year basis in New England. And they're getting a guy in Marvin Jones, who, yes, is a little bit older, but he's still playing at an extremely high level. They get a much needed veteran presence on this offense. They have DJ Chark and LaVisca Chenault, two young dynamic weapons. But Marvin Jones gives them a veteran that they need. It gives them a red zone presence, another deep threat. And I think that's going to be crucial as these young receivers start to grow and develop in their careers. And your young quarterback comes in to Jacksonville, which at the time of this recording, we still do expect Trevor Lawrence to be the quarterback of the Jags with that 101. That's an assumption we are making here in this video. But Marvin Jones can still get it done. I'm still a believer. I think this is a very, very underrated underrated signing. And Marvin Jones over the past four seasons, seventh in the NFL in touchdown catches. So this is a great red zone threat for Trevor Lawrence, for Urban Meyer in this offense. And I think they're going to be set up in success in Jacksonville. So that is going to do it for the top five winners of the early free agency period. We will see what happens today and beyond. Still a lot of big dominoes to fall. But before I sign off, check the links in the description below. Not only do we have our email newsletter on there, but also our Discord channel where we just want to connect uh, with you guys, you know, talk about different fantasy football moves, talk about different moves around the NFL, answer questions, all sorts of things. So check those out in the link in the description below. Hit that like and subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.